Hello, Serge here from the Backyard Driving Range. Okay, today we're going to have uh, in your own words from the Serge. All right. Now, many of you have been on this site for a long, a long time have known that in the last year or so, I've been having some, some pretty good issues with, with some poor ball striking coming in and, and hitting a lot of blocks to the right and even some, some as I like to call them, hosel rockets now and then. And it took me a while to figure it out because unfortunately, I don't think very much about my swing and my game. I'm thinking about everybody else's, especially DJ's and all of yours, especially when I get I get emails in and, and, and things like that and, and, and letters that come into customer service and, and, uh, and as soon as they come in I read them and, and if I'm going to use them for daily I'm starting to already write notes on them and think about them. But today, again, I've always, I've always felt that, that one of the good marks of a teacher is that A, he can do what he tells you to do. I got a big problem to me I think that, that, that if a teacher can't do what he's asking you to do. Uh, there's a, there's, what's wrong with that picture? I mean, it's like I've always said, I think uh, you should be able to have a reasonably decent swing and hit a reasonably decent golf ball, uh, golf shots, and, and shoot a reasonably de decent score if you want to be a golf instructor. Now, there's sometimes exceptions to every rule, but I know one exception to a rule is I've never seen a banker that can't count or accountant that can't count, and I've never seen a, I've never seen a doctor who can't take the side of blood. All right? And so, for the most part, I still think that, that, that a, a golf pro should be able to demonstrate everything he asks you to do. All right? And that's why I can do all of that. And so one of my goals is to make sure that I keep my game up to par, so to speak, or I like to think below par, all right? And, and, and so when I finally started thinking about my, my swing, the thing I started realizing was I was losing my posture. In fact, in many cases, I might not have even had a good to begin with. So let's talk about posture here, all right? In good posture, we're going to get what we call athletically ready. So that first starts with part of the readiness is also going to create what I call muscle engagement. My muscles are gazed and ready to, and, and are athletically ready, okay? And so that means they're engaged for movement. And so I can get, I can get so tight here where I, I can't move very much, and I can get so loose where again I can't move very coordinatedly at all. I might have some, I might look sloppy and lazy and stuff, and I can move as compared to being locked down. We got to find that happy medium, okay? Good athletically ready, all right? And and a good athletically ready position is 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 from this view, like a baseball player in the field, a tennis player waiting for the serve, all right? What do you see? The quarterback getting ready to to get the snap. He walks up and he starts going down. What do you see? The, the shoulders and the knees are going down together, the spine is, the head's up high, the spine's staying down, and it's going out together. And as, as, as they go down together, the knees and the shoulders, what do you see happening? The hips are being squeezed or pushed backwards, all right? And, and when they get pushed back properly, you're going to see a little bit of curvature at the base of the spine here, and right about where the belt is, okay? And so that's what good posture is. But for years and years, and I still hear people say it and talk about it today, there's the old concept of, of Good posture is like sitting down on a bar stool, right? So if you sit down on a bar stool, what's happening? Your whole upper body, from the hips to the shoulders, are basically are staying too erect, too vertical, too in line, and you go down like this, and now what happens? The only thing that gets squeezed out is your knees. So you're kind of sitting back on your heels, right? What can you do from back here? Nothing, all right, except sit down. So you gotta have that, you gotta have that hips going out. I mean. Sometimes I used to hear a lady say, you got to push out your tushy, okay? You know, I say you got to push those hips out, stick your butt out, whatever. You got to create that little bit of curvature here. And when it's correct, and you're in, you're in your posture, and your athletic, and your muscles are engaged, and you're athletic, you go. And so when you pull all this out, it puts a nice stretch in all your muscles. As soon as I go out like this, I can feel the muscles being pulled from my knee up here a little bit, tightened up from the knee down to the ankle, from here to here. I can feel them all the way up here. My arms go down like that. I can feel them, I can feel them straightened out. And, 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 to a, uh, and stretch. And, and basically what we want is maximum stretch on our muscles, all right? Pretty much right to the max. So when the muscles are at their longest, they're creating, they can create more work. But now when you get them so long, when you get them past normal, they're overstretched, they're now tightened. Just like at some point, you keep stretching the rubber band, you're gonna snap it. You gotta find that right point where you got the optimum resistance and that, that. And remember, one muscle group is always in, in one stretch and it's the opposite is contracted. So as we're stretching that stretched one, and getting a good stretch with it, the contracted one. Now when I change, the stretch one gets pulled, it starts to contract, which the other one starts to stretch. And so it's, a, it's always one working against the other, but it's always to be in that dynamic balance. But when you get in here a little bit too much like this, you're gonna see that, that, that 
you come down and if your legs fall into the ball guess what happens if your legs fall into the ball you're all, you're kind of sitting down too much a little bit on that bar stool the hips are sucked in there, which means the knees are too far out, the upper body is too far back, which means your hands are way too far in front of your face. You come back in like this, you fall into the ball like that, you're going you're gonna to very likely be pushing the shaft and the heel in too close to it, and, and, and or you come in like that and you have to straighten up, and the whole menagerie of problems is there. Bottoming out too soon, which can give you a bottom and, 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 and bounce into the ball, or even, or even stick the club in the ground, pull out of the shot and you got you got the whole menagerie of problems okay so the key is to get in a to get in a good posture and I've just found whether it could have been some laziness carelessness or whatever tiredness I don't know but again that's why it's good to make sure you can you can stay fit that that you that you're that you you stretched you can come over here and bend down and touch your toes or as far down as you can go all right you get a good stretch in your legs right and and, and you keep that good balance get that stretch so the whole thing is get in that good posture and then you have to maintain it so you have to get in here and you, and you got to get those hips out and and now as soon as so again if you go like this your hands go out you go like this your hands get pulled in so now your your lead your, your top thumb is is more under your chin is about where we want it somewhere around the chin so it's, we're going to have the more vertical incline plane that we're swinging on back down to impact and, and through all the way through as compared to you get up here you're swinging out in front of your body so everything can be walking you know flying if, flopping and flipping and, 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 and wavering all over the place. So we have to have this ready. The center, the center of your swing up here is, is in a good position. You're swinging, your arms are lifting and your hands are lifting up under your center on the back swing. And then they swing down underneath it and back up on it underneath your center. You get two, you get two under you, you're swinging outside, outside of your center. All right, and if you swing outside of your center, there's a tendency to be going up and down and up and your club goes and your arms go that way, which is gonna very likely cause slices can cause pushes and slices. So maintaining your posture is critical, but the key is to get in the good posture to begin with. Okay? And that is very that's very critical. So once you get in here and you and you get it, you've got to maintain it all the way through there to to at least impact. Because if you come in here and you start losing your posture, you lift up too much and you get bad or you sway or whatever, and you start coming this way in the posture on the way down, your legs are collapsing because you got too much knee movement, that's big trouble. Who knows? You can't even I, I can't, there's not enough time to tell me how many things can go wrong. But when you stand here and maintain that posture, you get the good lift all the way to impact, and then you can push off and stand up. But naturally, I can't hit that way. Even though there's mostly woods back there, I'm not going to do it. But I'll hit this way. So I get in that good posture. So I'm always big about making sure I get that little bit of push on my, on my belt buckle back there. I create that curvature in the back. I get that athletically engaged knees, athletically ready and engaged muscles. You maintain your stillness, your steadiness, your stableness, and you can just lift those arms up and swing up to that tee finish, and you'll be smoking it like that. Okay? Posture is critical. Athletically ready is it. You can't let yourself get, get sloppy, lazy, or, 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 or haphazardly into your posture, and especially on your heels. You have to be weight in the arches for all of this, okay? Weight has to be in the arches, and so you're right in here, okay? Athletically ready, like that player waiting for the tennis serve, okay? Well, that's it for the search for today on how critically important posture is that you have to have it correct and you have to maintain it all the way through impact from takeaway to impact and then stand up. Posture is critical to keep all the right angles, keep the right path in plane, and to stay totally muscles engaged, athletically ready. That's it for today, and I'll be speaking with you all again soon.